Hey everyone, Sam Evans here, and today I want to talk about turning hard things into base instincts. So first of all, like, why would you want to do that and what is a base instinct? So we, when I look at like these different Facebook groups and things, and I, when I look at what other people, uh, start out entrepreneurs and things are going through and the problems that they're coming up against and facing, a lot of it is, you know, they'll say things like, hey, I'm thinking about starting my own business, but I'm not sure if I'll be any good at it, or I'm not sure if I'll succeed, or I don't feel very confident. And, you know, they think, oh, because I don't feel confident, and because I am not a master at this thing yet, then I don't know if I should start. I don't know if I should actually do it. And this is a very common delusion that I see amongst all human beings. And what it is, is basically, you know, as a human, when we come up against something, when we, when we face something in life, like a, a particular task or something, and we aren't good at it, and it's unknown to us, and we haven't done it before, and it's foreign, you know, what we do is we think, oh, this is, this is bad. Like, I'm not any good at this, I don't know what to do, and the outcome, I have no idea what that's gonna be. And then all these emotions come on and we start thinking, oh, this is bad, we, should, we shouldn't do this at all, all right? And then a lot of people think, well, if this is hard and I'm feeling scared about it and uncertain, then I shouldn't do it at all. And so they don't. And that's why most people never achieve greatness. And that's why most people never start their own business. And that's why most people don't achieve their dreams because they try to do something that's new, they come up against that resistance, the emotions come on, and then they react to that. And that's the sequence. And then they come back and they retreat to fine. And retreating to fine is like, gotta be the thing that plagues most people. You know, they want to be up here. They, d they dream of being here, but then they start to try and get there. Then they feel a bit of pain and then they retreat to fine and then they just stay comfy at this level but it's the, it's the worst, most excruciating place to be in in the world because you know, knowing you could be here, dreaming of being here and not getting there and not even trying to get there, that's the worst. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. And so what this is, is you know, it's, a basic human, uh, it's a basic human bias that we have. Whenever we face uh, circumstances or situations that are uh, unknown to us and we're not able to predict what's going to happen and they're foreign then we tend to get emotional about it and not want to try it and this you'll see this happen everywhere like whenever you try and change the way somebody does something so even facebook like every now and then they'll change their user interface the ui and then all of these people are up in arms about it and then when instagram changed their look everyone was up in arms about it just changing little behaviors like that because it's unforeseen and they didn't know that was coming and it's a change in behavior, then humans are like, whoa, this is freaky, this is a bad move, but then once they get used to it, it always, no one even seems to remember what the old one was like. Like, can you think back to the old Instagram logo or like the old Facebook UI? Like, no one even thinks about it, but when you, that first change happened, you were like, oh, I, don't, I don't feel good about this. Well, that's the same thing that's happening. And the key to breaking through this thing and the key to getting what you want in life and achieving what you want is you've got to turn the hard things into not just habits, but base instincts. So what are base instincts? So base instincts are things that are like hard-coded in our DNA from, from like millions of years that you know, tell us what to do and how to function. So I'll give you some examples of them. Like, we have uh, instincts in us for survival. So if you ever get into a situation where it's like life-threatening, then you stop thinking. Your conscious cognitive mind does not do anything. It's just pure instinct. It's coming from your subconscious and you have f flight or fight and you know, you just, you know what to do and you just react in the moment and then afterwards you, you think, man, I wasn't even thinking about that. And I'm sure a lot of you have had this experience too if you've ever been in a car and driving and someone pulls out or someone swerves or something like that, then your reaction is immediate. And then afterwards you're like, whoa, I didn't even think about doing that. You know, that, that move I just made, it didn't process through my conscious mind and I didn't think about it, it just happened, all right? That is base instinct. 
That's something that's been practiced and repeated and ingrained into us so much that we don't have to think about it anymore. And the secret to being good in anything is to operate on instincts instead of thinking. Like, this is very, this is kind of opposing and polarizing to what a lot of people think, but thinking about doing something is often not the way to do it. Like, I've, I've read a lot about like pro athletes, pro businessmen, pro everyone. And, you know, Michael Jordan, one of the things, and Kobe Bryant, the things that they said were, you know, were, they had a lot in common. And one thing that they both said was, when you step onto the court, you don't wanna think. If you're stopping to think about something, it's too late, all right? You have to react way faster than that. You, you don't have time to think. And same with Formula One race car drivers and all of these people, they don't have time to think. And what we tend to believe ourselves is that, you know, we, we control everything ourselves with our conscious mind. Like, oh, we do what we want and we think about doing something, then we do it. And our conscious thought controls everything that we do. But really your conscious thought controls, I would say maybe 10% of what you actually do. Most of what you do is not what you actually control yourself to do. It comes from your subconscious mind. And if you don't believe me, then why haven't you achieved your goals? You know, you know what you want to achieve, you know what you have to do to get them, but somehow when you go to do that action item or you go to do the work, some emotion comes on, you get distracted and you kind of ping off and then you come back and reflect on it later and you're like, hey, why didn't I do that? And then this mode becomes default. You know, avoiding pain and avoiding the hard stuff becomes a default. And so this happens to everybody. And a perfect example I can give you of like, you know, base instincts is survival. And, you know, that's probably one of the strongest instincts we've got. Another one is to, uh, is to procreate. So, you know, if you're, if you're born a male, then, you know, that's one thing that we're all hardwired to do. And if we weren't, then the human race wouldn't be as large as it is today. And if any animal wasn't hardwired to have instincts to procreate, then that species wouldn't exist. So these things are hard-coded in there, like survival instincts and also uh, the instinct to procreate. And there's some other ones too. But what you really want to do, like you won't achieve massive success in life or business until you turn the hard things into base instincts. Because if something, if you need to do something to be successful and that thing is really hard to do and it remains hard to do, then you'll never be good at it. Because doing something hard that we don't like and that we have to think a lot about is too energy consuming, it's too draining. And we, we're not going to do it. We might be able to do it one day, but we're not gonna be able to do it consistently all the time without even thinking about it, right? So we need to turn these hard things that are necessary for us to achieve our goals into base instincts that happen automatically. Well, how do you do that? You know, it might sound great in theory, like Sam, oh, that makes total sense. You know, if only I could turn doing hard things into something so ingrained in me that it was just like fighting for survival, right? And you can do it. And you have to go through some different stages to get there. So the first thing that you want to do is identify what you have to do to get what you want. You have to look at the end that you want to achieve. Like, where do you want to be one year from now? Where do you want to be two, three, four, five, ten years from now? You have to zoom out and kind of think, where do I want to be? And then you can reverse engineer back to today. And then you can identify the things that you have to do along the way to get to where you want to go. All right? There's a pretty easy... Uh, conscious exercise. It happens from your logical, rational mind, and it's pretty easy to do. But the hard part is doing it and sticking to it and doing it every day. And this is where most people fall down and fail because pretty much everyone creates New Year's resolutions, goals, dreams, all of this, but barely anyone achieves them. So we can tell from that that the hard part is doing it, not the planning. So once we've got the planning done and we go to do it, and we feel like what I can guarantee you is gonna happen is you're gonna to go to, you're gonna be really happy about your plan. Lots of dopamine's gonna be set off from doing that planning exercise because you're thinking about yourself in the future, being rich, successful, happy, all of this stuff, right? Fun exercise. But then 
you got to go and do the work. And then you get, you sit down at your computer and you start doing the work and you're like, man, this is hard. Man, I don't know how to do this. I'm not that confident at doing this. And like, I haven't done this thing before. This is harder than I thought. All of these thoughts rushing through your mind. And then the emotions are going to come on. There's going to be this fear. There's going to be like a pit in your stomach or a tightness in your chest, anxiety. And you're going to have these emotions kind of come on over you. And they're going to start to wreak havoc with you. Because now you're uncertain rationally and emotionally you're anxious and frightened. And so a lot of people, they don't have the self-control or the awareness to deal with that. And so what they do is they receive these emotions and logical processes and they think, exit, get out of this. Don't do it, wrong thing to do, right? So they stop, they retreat back to fine, and then they stay there and they don't come back. And they don't come back into the battle to get what they want. So the first thing you need to do is just be totally aware that this is normal. Like, when you do the plan, that's easy, but when you go to do the work, know what's going to happen to you. There isn't anybody who doesn't experience this when they go to do something totally foreign to them, right? You could take like Michael Jordan, who was like the best in the world, or Kobe Bryant, like some of the best in the world at basketball. But if you put them on a soccer field or in a 100 meter freestyle race in a pool, they're gonna be totally freaking out, uncertain and everything because that isn't instinct for them. This is now in uncharted territory. And whenever a human goes into total uncharted territory, this happens. So you need to understand that first of all. It's not that you're different and that you're the only one who experiences this. It's not that you're not good at this or you don't have the confidence or anything. Plain and simple, it's just because you haven't done this thing before and it's normal. So once you have that awareness and you know it's gonna happen, when it happens, you can be like, oh, okay, this is what Sam told me was gonna happen. And then you can kind of just sit there and think, all right, this is normal, this is normal. And then you need to push through it, right? There's no getting around pushing through it and going through a bit of pain. Absolutely no way around it. For, you know, human beings have innovated a lot of stuff. We've like flown, uh, traveled to the moon and stuff, invented all sorts of crazy things. But no human has figured out a way to get uh, fit and healthy and everything without going to the gym and sweating a lot. And so, you know, there's no people, like a lot of people think there must be a way to get around the pain, but there isn't. At, the, at first, you have to go straight through it. You have to just look the monster dead on in the eyes, feel the pain, and just push through. There's no other way, trust me. You can go to every seminar in the world. You can read every self-help book in the world. You could become a professor from Oxford University on uh, self-improvement and emotions. Yet, when you try to do something you haven't done before, you're going to face the pain. There's no way around it. And this is a big thing for a lot of like, uh, motivational and like spiritual guru people and like don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with with those people I actually quite like them because they're positive thinking and that's a whole lot better than being negative thinking right but there's a big flaw in their philosophy in their worldview which is that you know everything should just flow and also everything should be like easy and natural and just come to you and it you should have attraction and abundance and all of this crap right and that you should just sit there, meditate, and think about happy thoughts, and then you know money's gonna start flying into your living room or into your letterbox. That ain't gonna happen, right? You have to do the work to get the results. It's better to have a positive mindset than a negative one, but a positive mindset without action is just gonna make you a happy, poor person. And you know that, that's all. So you have to do the work. That's the only way to get things done. And the only way to do the work is to go through some pain. And so you have to just look the monster in the eyes and just drive straight through that thing and get it done. And here's the good news. It's not gonna be painful forever. Like, it's only gonna be painful, like, the most painful time is the first time. Like, I can tell you that. Like, I remember doing the first sales call I ever did. Oh my God, like my emotions were going absolutely berserk. And I'm pretty sure after that, I had to like decompress in bed for like three hours like, thinking back now, I'm like, what the hell was I doing? It was like a total um, emotional mess and totally irrational. But it's because I'd never done it before. And I'm an introverted person and I'm like, I'm shy 
and I don't, I'm not an outgoing person that just loves talking to people all the time. So when I went to go and do something I'd never done before and talk to a stranger on the phone and tried to sell them something, all sorts of havoc kicked in. And so you've got to expect that to happen and push through it. Then the second time you do it, it'll get a little bit easier. Then the third time, easier again. The fourth time, easier again. And if you do it enough times, then it starts to get easier, easier, easier. And then it becomes quite easy. And when it becomes quite easy, it becomes fun for you. And then you actually like doing it. And then when you go to do it, you don't have to think about doing it as much, or you don't have to worry about it, you just kind of do it. And that's when really doing a hard thing gets turned into a habit. And it takes about like 30 days to really form a, like the starting of a good habit. So what I recommend people do is find the actions that you need to do every single day to get to where you wanna go, and then do them every day. Because what we do every day becomes like who we are, it becomes so ingrained in us that it becomes our habit. The key is to do the things you need to do every single day. So for a lot of entrepreneurs, what I tell them to do is you need to do revenue generating activities every day. What are those? Well, that's things like generating leads. So that might be posting on your Facebook page, to, uh, saying like making offers to people, sending people cold emails, uh, growing your network on Facebook and LinkedIn, messaging people there, con contributing in Facebook groups and things, and you know, talking to people, having conversations with people, and then making them offers, trying to get them on the phone for sales calls, talking to them, making them offers. Those are the revenue generating activities that really move the needle in business. And you need to make doing those things, they can't just be, oh, I'll do them every Wednesday, or I'll do them every second Wednesday. The people who make those things kind of tasks that happen like uh, not that frequent like that, they're always painful for them to do. So you need to start doing it every day. And the best thing is to do it every day, first thing in the morning. Because what we do every day, first thing in the morning becomes probably the strongest habit that we have as a human. So that's why you wanna do that. And you've gotta to stick to it for at least 30 days. And I can promise you, if you do something every day religiously for 30 days straight, then it'll start to become more natural to you and it will become a habit. And one thing you can do to really hack your brain's psychology and create habits easier is, uh, I learned this from this book called The Power of Habit, and it's by some guy called, his last name's Duhigg, it might be James or Charles Duhigg, something like that, but it's called The Power of Habit, it's a good book. And in the book, uh, I can boil it down into, like, into a 30 second soundbite. So basically, the way we have, the way our brain forms habits is with three things, a trigger, an action, and a reward. So a trigger is just something that's, that triggers us or signals us that, oh, we need to take this action. So a trigger could be uh, you know, waking up first thing in the morning. That's a trigger. And another trigger could be like an alarm clock or 12 o'clock could, could be the trigger for lunch. It could be a time, it could be you know, the, a moment in the day, or it could be a sound or an alarm or something like that, right? And a good experiment to think about this is like Pavlov's dogs. And what they did is the scientist, he, and this is a really old experiment. What he did is he would ring a, he had a dog and he'd ring a bell and then he would feed the dog some food. And he did that enough times. And then eventually, if he rang the bell and didn't give the dog the food, the dog would just sit there like salivating, like waiting for the food. Because the dog had associated that stimulus, which was the bell, to receiving food. So, you know, the dog was starting to form a habit. And that's what your animals around your house will do too. They will have associated, like, triggers with certain things, and when those triggers happen, they will react in that certain way. Just kind of like when someone says your name, like Sam, you, you turn around and you're like, who said that, All right? That's like a trigger. And so if you wanna create a habit, you've gotta first of all think, what's my trigger gonna be? Like, what, is it gonna be a time of the day? Is it gonna, like, what is it? And I'm telling you, the best thing you can use is just first thing in the morning. So like, the people who go to the gym and have the most success with it, they just go first thing in the morning because you just get it done with, you wanna try and move those big rocks first, get it done, and then you've got momentum for the rest of your day. But after the trigger comes the action. And the action is when you actually just do the thing. 
So like first thing in the morning is the trigger, action is going to the gym, all right, simple. And then the reward is what you give yourself afterwards for completing the action. Because you wanna give your brain a reward so that it can associate, oh, this thing happens, I do this, I get that. All right, that's how it works. And you wanna give yourself like a little treat. And it doesn't have to be extravagant or anything. Uh, some examples, like what I've used personally, so after going to the gym, like the thing that I think about is like my, my morning smoothie and my coffee. So my morning smoothie, it, it tastes pretty damn good and the coffee does too. And so the first, the, my trigger is first thing in the morning. I think, all right, first thing in the morning, gym. It's a bit painful, gotta get it done, but I wanna get through that so I can get that reward, the coffee and the smoothie. And it becomes an ingrained habit over time. And back in the day when I, was, when I had a lot of difficulty doing sales, what I would do is my trigger was first thing in the morning. So first thing in the morning, I'd come to my desk, open up my laptop, and I would do the necessary tasks I had to do to generate sales. And that was a little bit painful for me to do, but afterwards what I'd do is I'd go to my favorite cafe and just sit there with an awesome view in the sun for like 30 minutes and just drink a coffee. That was my reward. So think this right now, trigger action reward. What's the one thing that you need to do to get what you want? Identify that thing, that's the action. That's the thing that unlocks everything you want in life, doing that thing. So find out what that thing is and write it on a piece of paper and stick it around your entire house so that you don't forget. Because it, it really is this simple. If you do that thing, then you get everything that you want. So making yourself aware of what that thing is and not forgetting it is pretty damn important. So plaster it everywhere so that you don't forget. And then think, what's the trigger gonna be? I recommend first thing in the morning. And then what's your reward gonna be? Maybe it's having uh, you know, a smoothie, maybe it's a coffee, maybe it's something else. Whatever it is, write it down, figure out what your trigger action reward pattern is and plaster that thing around your house so that you don't forget. And then stick to it for at least 30 days. Very important. And what I recommend here is to just have a Google spreadsheet and just have day one, two, three, four, down like that. And every day you get it done, mark done, 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 done. Because what happens here is once you've done something for like four or five times, and then you look at it and you're like, yeah, that looks awesome. I've got that track record there and I can see it. I can visualize it. Then you're like, oh, it would be too painful to not do this thing now because then I'd have to go back to the start again. And this is one of the main things why Alcoholics Anonymous is so successful at helping people with their alcohol addictions. It's because they go to these meetups and they give people these little things. Like, I don't know what they are, but I've heard of them. They're like a coin or a badge or something. And it says how many days, years or months a person has been sober for. And you can imagine, uh, and actually when they do the meetings, the first thing they say is what their name is and how long they've been sober for. So they make it a thing like that because honestly, when you track something and you gain momentum with it and you're aware of that thing all the time, the more of a track record you have, the more painful it will be for you to break that thing. Because as humans, we're more motivated uh, to avoid loss than we are to get gain, right? So once you have something built up, you wanna fight like how not to mess that thing up. And so you wanna track your Google Sheet like that and build up that momentum and just give it everything you've got to hit those 30 days. I can promise you the first day will be the most painful. The first week will be the most painful week. And the first 30 days will be the most painful period of doing the thing ever. But after that, it becomes a habit. But a habit is still not enough. Like the true killers and the true, like, uh, the true masters of their game, it doesn't matter what it is, sports, business, anything. They've honed these things so much that they've become something more than a habit. They've become base instincts. Because with a habit, you still kind of have to think about it. And it's still not an instinct. You know, a habit might be brushing your teeth and going to the gym, but an instinct is like something like survival, like fight or flight, right? And that an instinct is on another level than a habit. Because, you know, it doesn't matter what we do, humans are hardwired to fight for their life. But, you know, not every human habits are that strong. Every habit kind of falls off every now and then, even brushing your teeth, going to the gym, things like that, they're not, they're not base instincts. So the next level that you've got to take things to is base instinct. And how do you do that? Well, 
there's only really a few things. The first one is practice. Like there's no other way to get good at anything. I know a lot of people believe that, oh, like you're, we're born into this world with these skills and these gifts. And I can tell you that that's a load of bullshit. Like Michael Jordan was not born good at basketball. And he didn't know how to play basketball when he was born. And he had to practice and learn to get good at it. And it was practice that made him good. And if you looked at the amount of time that Michael Jordan practiced, it would have been more than everybody else. So why was he better? It's not some gift. It's hours of practice. He practiced more than everyone else, therefore he wins. So practice is the answer to winning. If you practice more than anybody else, you will beat everybody else. It's plain and simple, just like that. And I remember um, I, was, I read this book where this guy had devoted his entire life to uh, finding out why like runners in Kenya were better than other runners from all around the world. And a lot of people had like kind of uh, had guessed at what this might be. Maybe it's their spirituality, their religion, maybe it's the altitude, maybe it's like something in the water, maybe it's their diet and their food or their culture, right? All sorts of stuff. And so this guy like dedicated his life to researching it and trying to find out why. And in the end, he found out, and he wrote this in his book, he said that they just train longer and harder than everybody else. Like they practice running more and when they practice, they practice harder. That's it. Nothing else, no woo woo stuff, just that. And also Kobe Bryant, uh, that guy's a beast. And you wanna watch his documentary, it's called Muse. Kobe Bryant Muse, M-U-S-E. It's an awesome documentary, you'll like it. But in there he said, you know, I wanted to be the best in the world. And he thought, well if I wanna be the best in the world, I just need to practice more than everyone else. And to practice more than everyone else, I'm limited by time. Time is a huge restriction. So he thought, how can I squeeze more practice in in my day every day? So he started looking at, looking at it and he thought, well if I wake up at like three or four a.m. in the morning, I can do a practice session then and then I can kind of have a sleep, kind of go back to bed, and then have another session, and then rest and relax, maybe have a nap, and then have another session, then rest, then have another session. And he said most players were getting in maybe one to two practice sessions a day, and he got in three or four. And a lot of players, they would take a couple of days off each week, he took like none. And a lot of other players, if they won like a a game or a championship or something, then they'd go out that night and celebrate and then the next day they'd probably relax and chill out and he didn't. The day after he won, he'd just be back in the gym, four sessions. So no, you know, there's no slowing down once you win, back to it because otherwise someone's gonna beat you. And then even like off seasons, you know, a lot of athletes when the season's off, they kind of go back to their normal ways and they go back to their normal eating and they chill out, they don't practice because they think, oh, I'll get back in shape when the season's back on again, not Michael Jordan and Kobe. They practiced four times a day, every day, even in the off season, even when they won, even when everyone was calling them the best in the world, they still did it. So practice makes perfect. That saying is true. And a lot of people, I think they dismiss it because it sounds too simple, but it is true. And the only thing that separates people who are there from people who are here is hours of practice. And so you've got to practice to turn something into a base instinct. And it doesn't matter how hard it is right now, if you practice it enough and you do it enough times over a long enough period of time, it will become a habit. And then if you keep at it, it will become an instinct. And once it becomes an instinct, that is when you're dangerous, that's when you're powerful, because you no longer have to think. You know, your subconscious mind controls most of what you actually do. And if you don't believe me, then Try and stop your heart right now. Just pause and just think, all right, let's stop my heart. Let's try and do that. You can't do it, all right? And also, like when you're asleep, how are you breathing, right? When you're walking, are you really telling every muscle in your leg, like, oh, like this muscle on the right side, tweak a bit, like put some pressure there, lean that way, lean that way, lean back a bit, move forward. Like imagine how many commands have to come from your brain to all of your different muscles and everything in your body to balance and walk and do all of that. But you don't have to think about it, it just happens. That's all controlled by your subconscious. A lot of people never think about this. And when something's in your subconscious, that's when it's like a base instinct. 
And so when you do something enough and you practice something enough, it starts to get programmed into your subconscious and then it starts to just happen automatically without you thinking about it. Because when, when really good basketball players step on the court, they're not thinking. Their mind is quiet. There's nothing going through their mind at all. And they just, they just know what to do because it's all instinct. And when the best stock traders make their decisions, instinct. They're not sitting down with a pen and paper and rationally thinking. It's like instinct. And same with the best businessmen, the best salesmen, the best everyone. They've worked on the things that were hard and they were hard for them too. They turned them into habits and then they turned those habits into instincts. And that's what you need to do. Figure out the thing you need to do to get what you want in life Make that thing known to you. Turn it into a habit by doing it for at least 30 days. Find your trigger action reward sequence to drill it into your brain and then stick at it until it becomes a habit. And, oh no, not a habit, sorry. Until it becomes an instinct. And a lot of people, they ask me, Sam, how come like in your, in your program, Consulting Accelerator, what separates people who make like zero from people who make six figures what separates people who make six figures from seven? And what separates people who make seven figures from eight figures? And I've looked at all sorts of variables to try and figure out what one variable really does determine this. And I found out what it is. It's strategy sessions. So those are sales calls. So if, you just, if I just find out how many strategy sessions somebody has done, it is a true indicator of how successful they are and how much money they make. And so I'll give you an example. Someone who doesn't have any clients and they're wondering why they're not successful, they will have done, most commonly, zero strategy sessions. And they're wondering why they're not successful. It's ludicrous, really. If you don't do any sales calls, you're not gonna get any clients, but still they think it's something else. And then, you know, someone might have done five calls and they don't have a client. Well, it's because they've only done five. You know, most people to get their first client, they need to do around 30 calls. Some people get it on their first pop. Some people get it with five, 10, but on average, you need to do at least 30. And then to get good at something, you need to do more than 100. So to get really good at it, you need to do more than 100. And the conversion rate that we look for is 20%. So if we do uh, 100 calls, we should close 20 of them into clients. That's like a baseline. And in order to get to that baseline, you need to do at least 100 calls to get there. The first five might all be no's, the first 30 might all be no's, but once you've done more than 100, you'll start to get up at that 20% conversion rate. It's just practice. Sheer repetition and sheer practice and sheer consistency is what makes someone rich in business. And it's this simple, but everyone thinks it's all this other crap and makes it all complicated. All right, I'm telling you, this is as simple as it is. And then someone who's making six figures, Right? I can tell you that they'll be doing strategy sessions daily. They'll probably be doing like one to two, maybe three calls every day, Monday to Friday. Right? And just because they're doing that, that'll be the reason why they're making six figures. What about seven figures? This is where it gets interesting. Because we've got a lot of data now, we've, had, we've got like 13,000 customers, I've been doing this for like five years, and I have 25 people making seven figures, and I have all of their data. So I can look back at this data and really analyze it and see what goes on. And I've never seen someone get to seven figures without doing at least 1,000 strategy sessions. But most people who, well the only people I know of that have got to seven figures, they've all done more than 1,000 strategy sessions, all right? And so if you wanna to get to seven figures, just try to do 1,000 damn strategy sessions. You wanna to get to six figures, try and do at least one to three strategy sessions Monday to Friday. You'll get there if you do that action. And how you do that action all the time is by turning it into a habit with a trigger action reward sequence and then turning it into an instinct. And then what about like multi seven figures? What about like two million a year, three million, four million? Well, it's just doing more strategy sessions. Uh, Andrew Argu, one of my uh, students, when he got to seven figures, he had done about a thousand strategy sessions. Then when he got to about 300 grand a month, which is about like 3.6 million a year, he had done probably 2,000, 3,000 strategy sessions, and now he's at eight figures, which is like more than a, more than a million dollars a month. And we've actually got two students at that level, Lathan Fritz and Andrew Argue. And you know, I think 
ours, Consulting Accelerate, is probably one of the only programs, training programs, where people actually get to eight figures. Like, because eight figures is more than most gurus make. So it's like, it would be, like a lot of my students make more than most gurus. All right, that's a funny thing. I, I quite often joke that my students, students, students make more than some gurus. Because some of my students, students, students are making seven figures. And it all happens with practice and repetition. So how do they get to eight figures? Well, eight figures is when you can no longer do enough strategy sessions yourself and they have to have hired teams. So Andrew has, I think he has like six or seven sales reps and they're doing strategy sessions every day. And that's how you get to that next level. So the rule still applies. It's still the same action to get the same result and you just take it to the max you can possibly do yourself and then you multiply yourself by hiring other people and you make them have the habits, all right? This is all it is, this is all businesses. Finding out that one action that gets the result you want, doing it religiously every day, turning it into a habit, and then turning it into an instinct, going nuts on that thing, doing it all day, every day, being obsessed about it, being obsessed about this thing to the point that people look at you and they think that you're a disturbed psychopath. That's a good thing, if you're doing a, the right thing, all right? Most people think that obsessive and like really hungry successful people are like psychopathic or crazy or weird or something, but that's because most people aren't very good at anything. So of course, people who aren't good at things are gonna think that that's weird. But once you become one of those people, you think that the other people are weird. So, you know, you want to obsess about that thing you need to do so much until it just, it's all you ever think about and all you ever do, and when you do that, you'll be amazing at what you do. Because Michael Jordan and Kobe, they turned practicing into something that was just an obsession. And the best artists, the best photographers, you know, they, they do something so much until it pretty much becomes a part of them. I'm sure you've ridden a bike before and learned to ride a bike. At first, when you get on that thing, it's hard and you fall off and you have to think about doing all of this stuff and it's really confusing. But then once you get the hang of it, it becomes a little bit more natural and then once you've really got the hang of it, you don't even think about it. You just lean, you, you, everything happens without you thinking. That's how everything happens. You know, we seem to understand it with a bike, but we don't seem to understand it with business. We seem to think that, oh, if I try to do something in business and I'm not good at it at first, it means I suck at it and it must not have been a God-given gift to me at birth. Madness. It's just like riding a bike. Nobody gets on a bike at five years old, having never ridden one before, and just nails it. Never happens, ever. They have to practice, they have to go through the learning process, and no one gets good at it without practice either. So just keep things simple, and find out what you want in life, reverse engineer it, figure out what that action is that you need to take to get what you want, and then do it every day, trigger action reward sequence, Plaster that thing next to your computer, plaster it on your wall, put it on your fridge, put it on your bathroom mirror so that you don't forget it. And then put a get a Google Sheet up on your computer, track it every single day, and stick at it every day for years until that thing becomes a based instinct and you just annihilate all the competition and own what you do. That's the path, that's how you get there. So go and get it done. So if you've enjoyed this video, what I want you to do is click that like button right now. Also, uh, leave me something in the comment section below. I'm gonna read through all the comments myself personally and I'll reply to them too, so let me know what you thought of this video or if there's anything that you want me to do a video about coming up, let me know too. Uh, I look at the suggestions and a lot of the time I do videos on the suggestions. So speak, tell me what you want. And also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There should be a button to subscribe because I release videos like this every single week and I also release customer interviews with some of my successful students. Uh, pretty much, full. it's Monday to Friday, five days a week, release customer interviews and you know we release a lot of other content too. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. So thanks for watching this video and let's get this thing done. Find out what that thing is, write it down, take action, execute, get what you want.